วัสดีค่ะต้องขอต้อนรับทุกๆท,ท่านเข้าสู่การอบรมสัมมนานะคะของสมาคม EIS แห่งประเทศไทยนะคะ Good morning ladies and gentlemen The EIS Association of Thailand create the fifth EIS International Conference 2020 Welcome every everybody My name is Vantana c h u c h u i Secretary of EIS Association and Director of m a t h y o m Wat Nairong. Mr. s o n g k i e t please introduce yourself. สวัสดีครับ Good morning. I am Mr. s o n g k i e t Professor. I I'm going to be a co-speaker and uh, be a kind of MC online. And welcome to uh, the fifth international EIS conference. Trend in global development of competency-based education in the 21st century. So the cup number, okay? Yeah. And uh, every time that we did the conference, we are face-to-face -face meeting. But this year we have a uh, online meeting. What do you think? Okay. You, It's, yeah. Uh, This is the first online conference because of uh, you know the uh, kind of uh, crisis, and this is also the first uh, good start of our conference that uh, uh, we usually do the, the conference in different places, but today we are doing conference in the air because yeah. because is uh, we need to uh, start this for the new uh, you know trend of education. So I think it's going to be uh, a good start. For our education, in a way, what do you think that? Yeah, I think it's uh, easy for us to to learn and to share the experience, and easy for our audience. Uh, they did not come. They don't don't need to come to travel. Just stay home. Yeah, it saves time. It saves time, and everybody yeah. can be safe during the COVID 19. And how many times that you join the EIS conference? Because this okay. time it's the fifth, yeah. Yeah, it's the fifth. I uh, participated in uh, every uh, EIS conference, and I still remember last time we had the conference in uh, Chiang Mai. It's a very good uh, thing there, and it's a good start for our education. And we have a lot of new policies from that conference as well. I I remember that, but that the first time we did in c h o n b u r i and the second time right. in Chiang Mai, in Chiang Mai, the yes. the third time uh, hosted by s a t i s i n a n and the last time we 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 have a conference at Royal River Bangkok, and this is Bangkok. the fifth time. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, right. And uh, I still remember that every time we have the conference, that uh, uh, I see many teachers from every places. Uh, there are many of them coming from uh, you know different schools in different places there, and everybody come with the power of uh, you know to in for, for the in uh, development for uh, the education uh, to to our children. Yes, and every yeah, year, I, I, yeah. Yeah, I got every impressed. Every year, yes. yeah. Every year, we welcome uh, the audience from all of our country because the EIS Association have a, a member in every national, and also we have our friends from ASA. ASEAN EIS Association as well. So, uh, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our friend from ASA, especially Malaysia, because today we have a keynote speaker from Malaysia also. So, yeah, can you can you uh talk about our keynote speakers? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we are pleased that we have many keynote speakers for today's channel, and uh, we also have many audiences and uh, some guests 
uh, some uh, keynote speakers. Uh, for example, after uh, the reopening remark from Direct Dr. Surapong uh, uh the U.S. Direct uh, Prince President, we can have the uh, keynote speaker of uh, Datuk uh, um, Panchanathan from from uh, Malaysia. Yeah, his uh, his his. Uh, his his an ex uh, direct uh, vice di uh, deputy director of education Malaysia, and we also have uh, some keynote speakers from Ramkampang um, Ramkampang Advent International Schools, and also uh, Mrs. Elisa, uh, principal of American School of Bangkok ASB, and then we also have uh, some other Thai you know keynote speakers like uh, Director Wantana, the director of uh, One Day Wrong School. Yeah, and some other keynote speakers. So I think it's going to be an interesting session for today. And also, we also have uh, the, the guest of honor, the some, we have also a lot of guests, like uh, Dr. Komkit Jan Kajon from, from uh, Education Council. Yeah. And also, Mr. Thomas from Singapore, our friend from ESA. Yeah, Mr. And Thomas I hope Lop. that our friend from many countries from AEISA, ASEAN EIS Association, come to join us as well. And so welcome also, you, everybody. yeah. And so also, we have uh, uh, Mr. Chawalit Ponakorn expert from OPEC, Mr. Thirapan Thiranan, former director of Pomanuson School, and also everyone from uh, every part of ASEAN EIS Regional Center. Like uh, in the north, we have Damlongla uh, Songkot School and Vichalai Technik Chiang Rai. In the North East, the center is uh, Kamala Sai School and Papak Vitya School from the Kontanum. In the South, we have uh, from Hat Yai Sombun Kun Kanya School. And in the East, from Sun Thon Pu. This is the center of our EIS Association. So I'm uh, our EIS Association are delighted to offer the most hospitable welcome to all delegates. And I think this time we can uh, have the op opportunity to check to to share our our knowledge and we can uh, we will can share and have some more experience to manage our teaching during COVID-19 outbreak. Yeah, right. Because EAS, we have a network throughout the country and also in other countries. So right now, I think it's the right time. It's about uh, for opening <laughs> remark from uh, Director Supongam Som. Please welcome. Please welcome, Mr. Surapong. Okay, good morning. Okay, thank you very much for the secretary and the uh, cooperator, Mr. Sunket. Now I have uh, about the uh, deputy minister from the Malaysia come join together and the director on the principal from the uh, international school that wait from already uh, Mr. P. Subachai, please invite him come to church together. Okay. Subchai. Let you invite Mr. Pramit. Yes, yes, okay. Okay. If possible, invite Mr. Pramit to join come in this uh, class. Now, he already, he gets you already about Superchai, right? Okay. Uh, 
Ready and gentlemen, welcome to our EAS right online conference of this today. And I'm very sorry to if inconvenient and for the available for you to join to this. Don't worry about executory can tell you you can uh, follow up from the right team on any time, anywhere that you have a time to would like to attend. Now we have our speak our, our audience and speaker come to join to us already. So that in the the screen, that is the former minister of education in Malaysia, Datuk P. Kamaratan, and also now he have. Uh, he be uh, uh, the director of ASEAN Medicine, Science and Technology of the University in Malaysia. Welcome. Come Thank you very much. Yes. Please say something for our audience and our speaker. Yeah, I mean, um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, the EIS Association of Thailand yeah. uh, for inviting me to share some of our inputs, my inputs personally, uh, my experiences in the uh, when I was the uh, deputy minister in the Ministry of Education, um, and to share with you how Malaysia has gone far on uh, digital education, because today the entire world is talking about digital education. The entire world is talking about online education, online school. And the good thing is that Malaysia was prepared for online education, digital education, but of course nobody expected uh, this pandemic, especially the COVID-19, to be a platform for the entire world to talk about digital and online education. So I think, uh, I think uh, EIS Thailand um, have uh, made the right decision in uh, choosing a subject which is a subject which is talked about by um, almost all people in the world. So congratulations to uh, EIS Association Thailand for being forward thinking, proactively thinking forward and to create a platform to share opinion of uh, experiences of uh, people, especially in um, the development of competency-based education in the 21st century. I think, uh, congratulations again, Mr. Srapong. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, the on audience or speaker, I would like to say thank Kamanarathan because I met him for four or five years or six years ago. That means in the yeah. last, in the last, we miss in Malaysia invite uh, to join to with the, our director in the Aid association in the school. But before yes. that, we met him like a policy maker from the government of Malaysia, from Google headquarters in California, right? That's right. That's right. This is, a, this is a, I appreciate that when you have a policy maker and have a attention to the people in Malaysia, why you use this that to implement for the education, especially by student, teacher, and among the people, for have a have a a cushion in the food quality in the education, so that yes. you know, in ten minutes we can join with the Kamaranathan in about in the topic that the audience can know already and for already. Okay, Arthur from the speaker from the. I'm not sure from the uh, uh, ISAC, that means International School of Association of Thailand, okay? International School of Association of Thailand come to join already. I know from the from before I telephone. So that, okay, they wait for, for invite something again. So I would like to say something about it. Because from the COVID, from the COVID-19, the big problem for all in the people in the world, 
especially in in academic. But okay, the poop, the person, especially from doctor, from medicine, from health, worry about the human for living for the future first. Also, before that, how to read them to careful to have to arrive way to uh, arrive way to protect the health and for live and hold part from the pandemic of COVID-19 now. Okay, in Thailand can say, but we must to awareness and worry about to help and how we can to work in the normalcy so that EIS Association, we try to develop quality of education, especially in Thailand. That's mean to help to our people in Thailand to be a global citizen. So that this is a topic of the fifth EIS international conference, but not not good opportunity before of COVID nineteen pandemic. So that this right conference look like pre the fight the fifth of EAS International Conference that we postpone to a three time. So we can join together if possible in September. And then we can just send to our invitation, invitation come to join in Bangkok again. If, if the situation of COVID and can collaborate and can uh, travel and together, okay? And thank you for all audience that come join today. And the second thing, how we can use, apply or you don't use, apply the situation that we found from COVID-19 pandemic and how we can educate our future, especially about the younger, because he, they are the future people of the world. How we can nurture them, how we can help them, how we can educate them better than now. The situation of COVID-19 make this situation for life or life learning. So that in this session, we would like or hope everybody get from the benefit from this conference from any keynote speaker, from the experience, from the uh, international school, that they don't about invocation or but they work in the semester time. He have experienced more than through the months of in Thailand, uh, Corona virus. Come to chair to in the next section. Thank you and thank you very much for all the audience, keynote speaker from the foreign uh, audience. I'm not sure Mr. Thomas Lowe come join together or not, Dr. Chavarit, uh, the principal from the uh, Jura Point Group School in Twin School come join together. They each come together can join in the in the in the stand for to show for our audience to show about it. Okay. Who have any question? We have a time for to the first session of the the session of the former deputy minister from the Malaysia that comes to chair to experience in about the policy and how to imply in the school, in the community, in other section to develop better. Okay, Mr. Sungkiat, can you try to say something with about the uh, co speaker? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you for your speech and uh, opening remark. So, we have uh, some idea how much uh, 
a vision our uh, president of EIS Association have to develop the education in, in Thailand and in, in or especially also in the global uh, aspect. And now, very interesting. It's, and this is what we are doing for the future of education uh, for our generation. So now, um, we'd like to, in, I would like to in, invite Datu Panchanathan Kamalanathan, a former deputy uh, minister of education of Malaysia. He is a, a Malaysian politician who is a member of the Malaysian Indian Congress in the Barisan National Coalition. He was the member, former member of the Parliament of Malaysia at the seat of Hulu Senghor. He is going to be uh, speaking on the innovative digital learning policy for global citizen. I would like to welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Somkar. Thank you for the uh, introduction. I appreciate it very much. I also like to thank Mr. Surapong, President of uh, EIS Association of Thailand, Wantana, <laughs> as well. And uh, I also like to put in record, like to appreciate and thank my colleagues, uh, Mr. Dinesh Tinagaran and also Mr. Sashi Muniendi of uh, Social Ethics for helping me in making this presentation to you today. And my appreciation and thank also the Ministry of Education in Malaysia and the Performance and Delivery Unit of the Ministry of Education, who has much put a lot of work in what we have in the Malaysian education, uh, in, in Malaysia and education now. Ladies and gentlemen, who is now following this conference, which is titled Trend in Global Development of Competency, based education in the 21st century. The world is going through such a challenging period. And my utmost kudos to the organizers for under these so tenuous circumstances have successfully organized this forum in the quest of upgrading education for all the participating nations. The COVID pandemic has brought about a situation not ever seen at a global level in the modern history. I'm hoping and praying the future generations are ever curtailed by similar situation. However, even in these circumstances, there are opportunities and potentials that can be developed. In fact, the pandemic might as well very well expedited the world's education system to embrace technology even more so ever than before. As I've mentioned earlier, that while Malaysia has got a very strong footing in technology and digital education, we feel that this time is excellent for us to put all our digital experiences and technology education into practice. Malaysia's journey bringing about a paradigm shift in our educational system began with the formulation of the Malaysian Education Blueprint 2013-2025. This education blueprint would probably be one of Malaysia's well-researched blueprint because it has an input of nearly 50,000 Malaysians across the board to give their views and opinion what they want, what they aspire for Malaysian education system to be in the future. 50,000 Malaysians have given input. The government came out with a draft education blueprint in 2012, presented to the people. And in 2012, it took another year to bring the draft back to all Malaysians to tell them this is what was suggested by Malaysians. This is the draft and give us your inputs so that we can put this into a blueprint. And in 2013, this blueprint, the good thing now is that when this Malaysian education blueprint was introduced in 2013, the then education minister, who, who was also the then deputy prime minister of Malaysia is now the Malaysian prime minister, Tan Sri Majudin Yassin. So having a prime minister, who understands the heartbeat of the Malaysian education system through the Malaysian education blueprint is actually a bonus for Malaysia. The blueprint was geared towards cutting, creating students harness their mind's power to develop the critical thinking skill and skill sets that are needed to adapt and thrive in a rapidly changing economy environment. The blueprint wanted to produce students who were nimble enough to learn how to learn 
and how to learn efficiently and effectively. Needless to say, technology with the prime move of these changes are also the answer to how to keep up to the successful of these changes. In many industries and countries, the most in-demand occupations or specialties did not exist 10 or even 5 years ago, and the pace of change is set to accelerate. By one popular estimate, 65% of children, and I repeat that, this is nearly two-thirds majority of the whole world population, 65% of children entering primary school today will ultimately end up working in completely new job types that they don't, don't yet exist. For example, when I went to school, or when my friends went to school, we never expected there will be a world on telephone. You do your trading, you do your purchases, you do your communication using technology. So this is what I'm trying to say. The 65% of children going to primary school today will ultimately end up working in a completely new job that doesn't exist today. Hence, we need our students to have the ability to learn on their feet fast to take advantage of the new jobs in the new economy. With this information, the concern I have is how our education system will support this rapid change and growth. As a result, we may see a growth in the teaching industry where the curriculum matches what the market demands. A tough but necessary problem to solve and potentially an area worth innovating in. These were the ideas and inspiration for the Malaysian Education Blueprint 2013-2025. If I may ask the organizers to share my chart number one. My chart number one, go ahead, the next one. Next one. That's right, keep it there. If you see this chart, the first thing that was needed to implement the blueprint was to strategize in detail how we plan to get where we wanted to go in the time frame we wanted to do. A transformation of the national education system is not an easy feat in the supporting elements of change are not identified and changed to meet the needs of the aspiration. At a school level, we needed to strengthen six main components. The first one is teaching and learning. When I say teaching and learning, teaching and learning are the heart centers for schools. They include the curriculum, pedagogy, content, and evaluation to ensure the students learn efficiently and effectively. Number two is the management and administration. The management and administration will be amalgamated with technology to be the driver and pivot to, the, to drive the transformation successfully and seamlessly. For example, if technology is introduced, but the management and administration in the school have not, they don't buy in the concept by the government, then it's going to be difficult. So we need to strengthen the management and administration. The third component is the human resource skills and responsibility, which I put there as skills. The school should engage all stakeholders, parties to form a synthesis of collaboration that uplifts the whole school. Teachers are the driving human resource, but government agencies, local communities and the public sector have a role to play in increasing the professionalism and knowledge base of the school administration in order to reach high performance. Gone were the days that we could tell people that we know everything. Gone were the days where government used to say, we know everything. Today, it doesn't work anymore. Today, the stakeholders want to be part of a decision making. And it's cool. Who are the stakeholders if it's not the parents? Who are not the stakeholders if it's not the teachers? Teachers and parents play an important role to ensure that whatever that goes into school is suitable. And as a education, we need to ensure that whatever we give are the best for the children. The four, fourth issue that need to be strengthened is the processes. The schools will be supplied with various resources or inputs so that they may generate outcomes and deliverables that are targeted. The fifth is, of course, technology. Technology becomes the main enabler in schools right from teaching and learning. 
management and administration as well as communication with the external world. When I say technology, we must understand. For example, in Malaysia, of course, in Thailand, in many part of countries, in this part of the world or any part of the world, we would like to give the school the best of everything, infrastructure development. So when you go to a school in a city, you find a school which is probably three-story, four-story, with a lot of facilities. But when you go to a school in an urban area, rural, rural area, they may not even have a one-story building. So we cannot have the same infrastructure development in all schools in a country. But one thing we can have is technology. Technology can be fair and square to any schools in any part of the world in wherever they could be. The sixth policy to need to strengthen is the government policy across the board are in line with assuring all the elements are empowered to fulfill the objectives and strengthening the elements holistically through policy. Can I have chart number two, please? Yes, this one. Thank you. Outcomes of school technology-based transformation. Once the implementation begins in school, schools are measured according to changes in the delivery, the role and outcomes generated among all the important elements, namely, number one, the teachers. Teachers are the most important human being in order to create a very effective and strong uh, student character. The ideas are teachers move away from the testimonial chalk and blackboard, teaching to become more facilitators that aid students to understand and excel the content being studied. I have say this many a times in conferences, that the time where chalk and talk, where we use chalk and we talk, we use chalk and we talk, it doesn't happen anymore. Of course, from chalk and talk, it became outline and whiteboard. But today, it is about click and share. Teachers will have to click and share contents. And number two is students. If you could see, the students are no more relying on the teachers for just answers, but have developed an attitude of intellectual independence to pursue access, procure, and learn by themselves aided by the teachers. These attributes are still are to, are to instill the values needed for lifelong learning as a way of living. Third, the teaching and learning. The focus issue of technology allows for a more student-centered, entertaining and engaging medium of learning, which is effective. I remember visiting a technical school in Singapore. In a technical school in Singapore, gamification was the next choice. Where, for example, a child who's going to a primary school have got a gamification process in order for them to like skills development. So they have created a system and this system is easily adaptable because it's technology based. You do not need infrastructure development to do gamification in education. Number four is the ICT usage. The culture of using ICT becomes embedded into the learning and teaching as well as the management and administration of the school authorities. A few years ago, computers may not be an essential product. It could be a luxurious tool. But moving forward, computers, technology, handphone will become essential products, especially in schools. In Malaysia, we have organization, for example, an organization called YTL Communications. They have gone to an extent to provide handphones with data for children who needs to go online education because some children especially those children in the b40 category b40 category may not have enough funds to buy these equipments but with the support of the public and private sector children can be equipped with these facilities and this is where i came into the smart collaboration the school now has a connection to the outer world with infinite collaboration potential. For example, a teacher from England can teach English and a scientist from Tokyo could teach a child in KL on a particular topic being studied. And again, I give you an example. Khan Academy is another case in point that students can access to learn any topic they choose. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring you to my next chart, which I'm going to talk about the system's aspiration. My third chart, please. Thank you very much. These are the system aspiration. There are five aspirations that we're looking at. Number one is the access. The aim here is to have 100% access of education from preschool state to higher secondary by 2020. Number two, the quality. The aim to qualify in the highest 13 percentage in international recognized evaluation, such as Teams and PISA, within the next 15 years. Equity, 50% gap closed in various segments, such as rural urban divide, socioeconomic gap, and gender gap by 2020, which is this year. Number four is unity, an education system that gives priority offering exchanges of values, experience to the children, which also, while also celebrating diversity. Malaysia has got a unique system. Malaysia has got diversity. While the world is looking of education diversity, the world was looking, how do we diversify education? Malaysia was already diversified education. How have we diversified education? We have various streams of schools. We have the national types of school. We have vernacular school. This diversion itself given has been given options for children, but the syllabus is maintained, the quality is maintained. The fifth one is optimization. A system that maximizes outcomes and optimizes the resources allocated is important. My next chart, it talks about students' aspiration. Thank you. My next chart, which is talking now, is about student aspiration. All in all, there are six aspirations. What do we want the student to be? How do we want the student to be globally competitive? Of course, number one is knowledge. The student should have a wide storage of knowledge and wisdom to navigate the information and data available discerning only that which will benefit from. And nowadays, student has got more enough knowledge. Some students may have enough knowledge than the teachers who are teaching because of technology. They are glued to technology. They understand what's happening. They do a lot of research and this is available now. Number two, critical thinking. <clears throat> Students must be critical thinking in all matters and discriminate value added solution and answer in all educational matters. The ability to think critically is the basis towards solving tomorrow's big and small changes. I had one experience when I was serving the government of Malaysia as a deputy minister. When we were implementing the higher order thinking skills, we wanted to give questions which can narrate into higher order thinking skills. This was the first year we implemented it. So we changed the concept of questions. For example, when a question is not using higher order thinking skills, we will tell, give us five examples of values based on the above paragraph so the child will give value one value two value three value four and value five that's a normal question when it comes to higher order thinking skills the question differs in the above paragraph there are five values what are the values and what do you understand by the values that means the child will need to identify the values and share to us what the child thinks about the value and that question created a ruckus among parents and teachers because they thought this was too difficult. But fortunately, children, parents and teachers have accepted it, adapted it. Today, the education ministry have implemented more. So number two, critical thinking. Students must, as I've already mentioned, the third is leadership. Students must have developed leadership skills and the retinue of positive traits that fellow follow leadership as an attribute. Number four is multilingual. Many population around the world know that Malaysia being a multiracial country, we have many languages. And we have made sure that in the education blueprint, students should master both the national language of Malay and the international language of English. And also mother tongue mastery other than these two, they are also encouraged. For example, me, I speak my national language of Bahasa Melayu, I speak the international language of English, and I speak the third language, my mother tongue, Tamil. So we are not bilingual. Most Malaysians are trilingual. 
Number five, ethics and spirituality. All around students who have their minds entrenched in positive values and ethics, while also embracing universal attitudes of compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. forgiveness. The last but not least, the national identity. Malaysia, as I've mentioned to you, is a blessed land of various races, cultures, and languages. These students should be proud of their heritage and culture, yet forge a common identity with all fellow Malaysians in a larger national psyche. The strategic objective of digitalization, I beg your pardon, the strategic objectives of digitalizing schools. Number one is to optimize the integration of ICT into the primary school standard curriculum and secondary schools. Number two, to increase the 21st century skills and higher order thinking skills through computational thinking and digital competency. Number three, widen students' usage of ICT both in schools and their homes. Number four, to increase educators' competency in the integration of ICT into the learning and teaching processes. Number five, to ensure access, conducive facilities and environment to support successful digitalization of schools. Number six, to increase the cybersecurity awareness among teachers and students to promote ICT usage in the ethical purpose. And number seven, to empower smart sharing between schools and agencies to help the development of digitized schools. Malaysia is currently ongoing this. This is an initiative taken undertaken uh, during the Education Blueprint, which was uh, chaired by uh, the present uh, Prime Minister, Yama Bohor Matan Sri so we are totally uh, entrenched into this, and this is what's happening right now. Although it is not 100% yet, but initiatives are being undertaken to ensure that more and more schools in this country will have the facility. As I mentioned to you earlier, we cannot have a same infrastructure in schools throughout the country. But one thing we can give throughout the country is technology, and this must be available. Uh, students have been given all these facilities to ensure that they get into the system. My last chart, which is being shown right now, what are the final outcomes in living skills and career? Number one, the final outcomes is students will be, have, will be able to have flexibility and adaptability. Flexible and high degree of adaptability to adapt to fast changing work environment and technological advancement in both work and personal life. Number two, initiative and independently self-motivated. They will have an identity that brims with independent self-effort, managing time optimally and planning well to the personal and organizational needs. Number three, the social and intercultural cultural sensitivity, sensitive and appreciate of culture diversity and mutual acceptance, tolerance and respect and cross-cultural socializing. Of course, now, because of the pandemic COVID-19, we have a social distancing formula but in social culturalizing, you need to understand and respect. Number four is productivity and accountability. Have a high degree of productivity and integrity in fulfilling corporate and personal responsibilities. Number five, leadership and responsibility. Show leadership characteristics that are demonstrable as a value team member who will work hard and steadfastly for both personal and organizational goals. In conclusion, the art of learning and the science of wisdom are never-ending journeys that we have to constantly keep pursuing and improving on. Let me share with you a quote from a great Tamil poet. His name is Thiruvalluvar. And this was said uh, in 300 BCE or 5th century in a book called Thirukural. I'll use my mother tongue to explain this word. I must translate this to you to justify what it means. What it means, letters and numbers are the two eyes of a human being. Such was his admiration for education. However, true education has to be holistic in the sense that let us not forget even with the gigantic leaps in technology advancement in education, it's our humanity that makes us human. Mutual respect, kindness, compassion are equally important as critical thinking and higher order thinking skills 
that produce PhDs and great academic minds. I would like to thank the organizers again for the excellent organization of this live conference, demonstrating that even a pandemic isn't going to stop the pursuit of education excellence. My wholeheartedly admiration and congratulations to them. And sincere thanks for letting me to share a little of my nation's experience and aspirations. I'd like to take your leave with a quote from the great elder statesman, Nelson Mandela, who said, education is the powerful weapon to change the world. It's my humble prayer that this conference leads to a weapon of mass enlightenment for students all over the world. God bless you and thank you very much. Uh, I hope the audience or other would like to have a fresh chance and for discussion about in the good presentation, especially about in the COVID-19 situation and the future citizen of the world. The, the power of technology or the internet that come to joy already. And so that I would like to invite some person come to joy for discussion. We have a time for this for about 10 to 15 minutes, okay? Okay, uh, yes. Okay, from it, can you, can you talk something? Okay, with about uh, the the former minister mission of Paris, yeah. No, I I think he 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 said very good, and he yeah. gave a lot of good guidelines to all of us. And, yeah. And and if we if we could go back to certain slide where where we see those who are stakeholder that and and I want to focus on on the fact that we need to understand consumer and and student. <laughs> and, parents and administration because if we are not coming in the psychological point of view of what students are going to feel at the end of the day studying online and, and doing work at home and the parents expectation of what the school can do and provide that's going to change everything and and then we need to target from preschools i mean i, I uh, depending on how you call it we can call it nursery to k3 elementary grade one and two and then and then we need to break down the admin need to understand the need of the parents the students and what we can do for them and and not just that we push everything and say online online and online to the students so so i think what the presenter did is very good and giving us a very broad viewpoint and and i just want to stress on that if we could break down into age group identify our customer <laughs> Okay, uh, that, uh, that took the time. Yeah. Can, you, can you come to your chair back or sure, sure. for more? Get more. Yeah, uh, Mr. Pramit, thank you very much uh, for your opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate your kind words and I agree with you. I think um, while we talk on online education, uh, we need to understand there must be a human touch in education. Uh, online education doesn't work by itself. There has to be a human touch and uh, it should be able to reach everyone uh, effectively. That's very important. And when I mentioned the student aspiration, it is important. While we talk about student aspiration, technology is something that has to be accepted across the board. Not only students, not only teachers. The parents need to understand the importance of online education. But we must also realize that some parents may not be able to get them the gadgets for the children. And this is where the government has to have a good public-private partnership. In Malaysia, they are good organization, many organizations. I've mentioned to you earlier just now, for example, YTL Communications, using their foundation, they've come forward. Similarly, we have Microsoft. We have many organizations that have come forward to support children to get the gadgets so that education can continue. However, in order for that to happen, parents must also understand 
that communications technology is the way forward. Thank you very much again, Mr. Paramit, for your thoughts and opinions. Okay, Mr. Paramit, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Sorry, okay, it was okay. disconnected. Anything for your dimension or anything for the something for ask him because that Samaranathan have experience about the technology and also uh -huh. about the language and in the politics and in education in many many things. He met him more than six and five years ago, you know, and collaborate together about especially in the education. You in about in the in the deputy or oh, oh, in the white uh white president of of international association in Bangkok eh, in Thailand. Okay, right? How can you 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 say look, or ask something for have a benefit for our island in all life only about in in a in a in a, in, a, in the in the right stream or not or something like that okay please <laughs> all right so the 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 concern i have is is we we like to look at the technologies and we add technology into it but but we're missing out the human touch and and that's what i'm i'm, I'm looking at the concern of human touch is very important to the student because the psychological needs is what we need to study now. Technology is easy to do now and, and it's easy to, to work with. And as an association in Thailand, um, the International School Association of Thailand, we have more than 150 schools with us. And we are looking not just with with the need of putting it online. You know, we were we were told within a day to switch, switch from, from, from offline, to, offline online. to online. And, 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 and that was very scary. Don't, 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 don't we have, uh, have uh, sorry. Uh, though we have uh, technological know-how, the human touch was needed. And that uh, human touch is where everyone is missing right now because everyone just want to push that they can do the school, they can run the school, they can run the online program. They're not communicating the parents. So, so I would start with orientating the parents of the expectation is very important because that's where they understand what they are required to do at home. And if we don't do any of that, parents is going to be in the dark what is happening at home. And, and then it has to break down by class. It, it will take some time, but it will help. And that's where I, I like to push today the ideas of not just the technology, the psychological needs and the human touch. Okay. Yes, yes. He has, uh, I, th I think Mr. Pramit has, has uh, mentioned it well. I, I, I agree with you. I'm on the same line with you. Um, whatever said and done, technology is there, but uh, human touch is equally important as technology. Technology can help you but it's not a standalone feature. It doesn't stand by itself. Uh, without the human touch, technology can disrupt whatever development that they're doing. So human touch is extremely important. Too much dependent on technology will not be that good, but it is the way forward. Today, the Correct. whole world is looking at online education, but the human touch is important. Human need to be involved in the evolution of technology education. I agree with you, Pranit. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, we have a true... Uh... A case from the principal of the American School of Bangkok and the 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 the, the audience or the the uh, the case from Singapore, Mr. Thomas. That means he is the president of the uh, association in Singapore. Please come to say that joy something or have any question for to the speaker, please. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Thomas Lowe from Singapore, from the Association uh, for Philosophy and Learning. Uh, yeah, that's what Kamala Nathan has a very uh, a good presentation uh, mm. earlier. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I would like to use a word, you know, a uh, Malay word called Kalangkabu. You know, <laughs> when this uh, COVID-19 started, you know, everybody 
uh, panic can all the educators they put in a lot of uh, effort in uh, putting up the online education system um, for our students including singapore although singapore we have uh, the uh, students learning space in place for our students uh, long ago but uh, that is not 100 percent you know that, that we uh, use uh, for teaching daily so when the government says, okay, you're in a lockdown and then everybody has to do their learning from home. So uh, this became a very uh, useful learning space for everyone. Uh, but wh what I want to uh, stress is that uh, one thing we need to look out is the mindset uh, of the teachers. Uh, while we embrace this COVID-19 uh, situation, because this is a very uh, uh, so-called uh, disruptive uh, moment for everyone. So um, teachers need to rewrite all the curriculums and, uh, and lesson plans to accommodate to this kind of situation. So uh, uh, it's pretty stressful for all the educators uh, and pretty stressful for the students to adapt to this kind of new learning environment as well. So uh, both no, they got to adapt and embrace this uh, new uh, learning platform uh, for current and not only currently, but also for the coming future. Uh, because I don't think so, this COVID-19 will end so fast. And even if it, if it ends uh, uh, in the next few months, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, learning uh, situation will not be the same again. Um, so I think... Uh, we need to relook into the future uh, learning and teaching uh, kind of a planning um, to adapt to this kind of new environment. And what uh, Mr. Uh, Paramit, uh, uh, Paramit has uh, mentioned is quite uh, quite valid as well. Uh, the loss of human touch is quite quite uh, an essential uh, concern of in this kind of environment, yeah. Thank you very much. This is all about the share, yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. I mean, uh, going back to the word that you used, the Bahasa Melayu, Kelangkabut, not only us, I think the whole world was Kelangkabut. Messy. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 well, this pandemic has one thing for sure, that people have not taken, now people have not taken things for granted anymore. Um. My personal opinion about the entire pandemic, it is not going to end. It is never going to end. There will be no deadline to say that as at today, there will be no more COVID-19. We have to learn to live with this pandemic. Even if the vaccine is developed, it may not solve the problem. It may delay, but it's not going to solve the problem. But as human beings, like Malaysia, like any other countries around the world, what is the most important that's going to make us survive this entire pandemic is to us taking care of ourselves. We need to be clean. We need to be safe. Then we are okay. Number two, for example, there's many diseases in this world that is not uh, controlled. For example, the dengue from the mosquito. Uh, people don't just stay at home because the mosquitoes are outside because when they go out, they're afraid the mosquito will bite them and they die of dengue. No, they still go out, but they are careful. They make sure they live in a clear, clean environment. So similarly, uh, COVID-19 is here to stay. Whether we like it or not, it's here mm -hmm. to stay. But what we need to do is we need to protect ourselves to make sure that we are not exposed to such situations. And my only concern is schools. Eventually, schools has to reopen. In some schools, the population is just too big. Not enough classrooms. The school goes into two sessions. There's a session in the morning. There's a session in the afternoon. School has 3,000 children. Social distancing will be almost impossible. So it looks like students may have to go to school on shift. The first shift student goes from go to school from 7 to 11. The second shift student goes to school from 12 to 2. And the third shift student goes to school from 3 to 7. Shifts can change to students, but unfortunately, the teachers are still the same person. 
we need to ensure that the teachers are also well protected. They are also frontline in this pandemic. And while the whole world, all government will try to reduce teachers' responsibility, eventually technology will help teachers to reduce their work burden as well. That's my personal opinion. And I think we in Malaysia, we nearly have half a million teachers. Almost all, if not all, almost all teachers are amazing teachers. In fact, we'll be celebrating, Malaysia will be celebrating its Teachers' Day this Saturday. So I think I'd like to take this opportunity and I would also like to invite my friends who are uh, witnessing this conference to pray for us in Malaysia. And I, as I pray for everyone in the world that we go, we get over a pandemic. I also like to wish all my teachers in Malaysia a very happy Teachers' Day. Uh, continue, you are the best. You will continue to be the best. And I'm sure we will continue to support you wherever you are. Once again, thank you very much. I, I, I have been to Singapore and visited some of your facilities. Gamification. I went to one of your skill schools in Singapore. Amazing. They had, for example, uh, for to, to go on a skill school in Singapore, I went. They had an oil rig on a 3D presentation. That means a student don't have to go to the sea to learn how an oil rig is operated. They have a classroom. So they have a 3D. So when there's lightning and thunderstorm and the sea waves hitting, the student is affected with the entire thing. So that's gamification. That's technology. And that's where we're all heading to. Okay. Very cool, very cool suggestion. And the, the experience from Malaysia and from Singapore and chat together. This is a benefit for the audience for the something for applying part of our in primary applying contact for each other for the daily life and for live in the future. So that Alisa have something great. Joy. All right. Um, good morning. My name is Alyssa and I'm the principal here at the American School of Bangkok. Um, I've been in Thailand for about 11 years now. So I've worked in the Thai system and the international system. Um, what Thomas was talking about in terms of just making sure that your teachers are on board, um, prepared, supported is, is huge. And, and many of the Thai schools are, you guys are just coming into, into this e-learning environment and into what this could possibly look like. And my suggestion for any of the school leaders that are out there is, be flexible um, and be understanding with yourself as well. These are difficult times that we are all going through. There isn't a one size fits all answer to this. Every school needs to figure out what exactly they need to do in order to get their parents to be on board, to get their students to be on board. What works for us doesn't work for other schools and vice versa. It is just it is trial and error, um, but one of the big things that helped us at our school is the communication that we have with our students and our families. We do daily announcements um, every morning where different teachers come in and say things. We have a daily riddle that kids can kind of watch and participate on. Um, just keeping that line of communication open as often as possible makes the kids also feel like they're connected to the school, but also gives a sense of ease for the parents that this is new for them too, right? I'm, I'm also a mom um, and having my kids with me and trying to do my job is very difficult, but you're also talking about parents who have never had to experience being at home with their children and trying to get them to learn. So. There is a lot of frustration. There is a lot of ups and downs. Try not to take it personal um, and try to take one day at a time and, and be easy on yourself too. A lot of the frustrations isn't geared at you, at the school. It's just the general frustration that's what's happening across the world. So my, my, my big suggestion to add into what everyone has talked about so far is just be flexible, be open, and keep trying. And if it doesn't work, you, you pick yourself up the next day and you move forward with something else. Thank you. Thank, thank you for telling you. Lisa. Thank you very much. Okay. I would like to ask for the okay. OK. Um, thank you. Uh, the took of Pajanathan, Kamalanathan, uh, former Deputy Minister of Education Malaysia, 
thank you for sharing with us about how far Malaysian education is going on. So impressive. And it's lucky for Malaysian people, children, whose opinion is always listened for education and development for the nation's future. And um, in fact, we also have share something in common about Malaysia education policy and our yeah, is association have in common about the teacher's role who is not a storyteller anymore, but a person who shares and manages the suitable learning environment for learning. And also thinking skill and leadership in ICT and also English uh, integration in education. Thank you again. All right, so Thank we have something. Much. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Thank you, bye. All right, goodbye. And uh, we have something interesting coming up uh, um, about the challenge of online class for international school on COVID-19 station presented by Mr. Paramit, uh, director of Lomkenheng Advent International School and Mrs. Elisa got from uh, pr uh, principal of Eric, uh, American School of Bangkok. Well, hello, welcome. It's the same screen with Alisa. All right, okay. Okay. You can go first. Sorry, can you, can you repeat the question? Challenges. Oh, okay. So we've already talked about the fact that we don't have that human connection. Um, and that's been super difficult, especially being in international school and most all of our instructors in English. So our students that have any type of learning disabilities or need extra accommodations or are lower in English, they've, they've really struggled with this this online learning platform, um, which is something that we are still constantly trying to make stronger. Um, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Um, for our school in particular, we we were lucky. Um, we knew that the e-learning was coming because we were watching what was happening in China. And we started preparing our e-learning platform before we had to actually close which is kind of where most of the Thai schools right now are in terms of you guys are, are preparing to open. Um, so we had a plan um, and we, we really decided to follow our exact schedule that we had during the day online. So we like at seven o'clock, 7.55 when the kids had their first class in school, they saw that teacher at 7.55 online. They had break at the same time, they had lunch at the same time. And that worked for us. That might not work for every other school. It just kind of depends. But it, it, the tech has also been a huge issue. I don't know if you guys have had issues with that. Just parents not being tech savvy and having to log into different educational platforms like Google Classroom, um, Zoom, Google Meet, all of that has been, has been pretty glitchy. Um, some other challenges, what about you? Um, what I can add is, when when we got the directive to change from doing coming to school to online, we, we felt the time given to us was quite short. It, it, we didn't have enough time to prepare like uh, most of the school that will be opening in July. But luckily, the teachers, the, the admin, the students were being trained in online learning for quite a while. A lot of schools could handle it very positively. A lot of schools struggle with it. Now, the, the issue that really bothers and, and I think would take an advice to everyone is divide your team into a few groups. One that tasks with communicating with the parents on how to do things. And divide them again into uh, kindergarten, preschools, uh, elementary, middle school, high school. Subgroup this communication uh, and, and, and try to send as much communication to the parents as possible. Get the feedback from them, what they're doing, because at the end of the day, a relationship approach is always the key to success. Unless we have a good relationship with our students, it will be affecting the student learning. They are in the shop, studying at home. It's new for them. They need to discipline themselves. Things change. Everything is not gonna be the same. So we have to accept that fact and learn from it. Number two, get another team of admin to encourage the teacher. At the end of the day, the teachers and the staff at the school are stressed. And, and if we're not gonna take care of our teachers, then they cannot deliver well. 
What happened is we need to support our teachers. We have to understand that teachers are also in fear of these diseases. And at the end of the day, they're stressed because their family in, in their countries are going through a lot of issues. Now, if the admin can separate a group of communicators to talk to the teachers, counsel them, be with them, support them, not just pressure them that I need it delivered. That would help the process. We need to hold hand of our employees, our teachers and our communities and work with us. This is a new normal. We, we're not gonna be able to adapt to this new normal in a click of a time. Uh, a lot of schools have a lot of time to adapt now, but take that approach because our employee, our teachers are the best resources you have. If you cannot take care of them, you cannot be able to take care of our students. Mm -hmm. Learning comes from two sides, the delivery and the listener. So, so once we communicate with the listener, our students, and communicate with our teachers, the, uh, the flow of it will come. Sure, we will struggle with technological know-how. Sure, we will struggle with our equipment. We will struggle with the online uh, methodologies. People need to, to adapt, give time, give space, and be flexible. Once we start listen as an admin, the third group are the admin and the curriculum design. We need to come back and, and, and redo the whole process. We cannot just take what we had and try to deliver them. Once we do that again, we're missing out. This is a new normal. This is a new thing. We need to adjust. So this curriculum team is needed to redefine the whole thing. How are we gonna teach math now? How are we gonna teach English now? How are we gonna teach science now? How are we going to deliver PE? How are we going to deliver art? Because everyone is still looking at the same old thing. We're going to start the school in the school, but we're not looking at the fact that the, the whole environment has shifted. Now it's not in a school atmosphere. Students are not going to take a break. Students are not meeting their friends. Teachers are not getting a break they need. Everything changes. So the curriculum design need to come up with a plan. How? How long should I do an online session? How long should I do my live session? In my schedule, would I allow students to talk to one another because they need to interact? Are we just deliver, 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 assess, 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 and we need the grades? Are we coming in that perspective? At the end of the day, learning will take place, but we need to come up with a new design. And, and, and yes, once we tackle into three groups, we're getting a group of communicators to the parents, communication to the teachers, and a design. Once we have a clear guideline and give them a new design, teachers can deliver better. Now let's, let's come back again. Do we have an online session for 45 minutes, for 20 minutes, for 15 minutes? Then what? Do we record it? Do we go live all the time? Do we check attendance? Do we not check attendance? This is a policy where admin needs to come back, draw a line and say, let's do this way. Let's do this way. Then the communication group will go down and deliver them to the parents, deliver them to the teachers, and the design group will continue the work. Now, the new normal will happen for years. Like Battle said, COVID will stay with us like Denki stayed with us. We need to shift. And once we shift, we need to what? Create a new standard. At the end, our job is to what? Once the student come back to the school, protect them. But more important, we need to protect everyone as our stakeholder, parents, teachers, students, Stop down to the gardener. If we're not looking at the safety of our gardener too, it's, it's, it's not gonna be good. So human are very important here. And at the end, admin needs to change their mindset. Mindset shifted will help deliver. And education will become a new normal in, in this system. As school will continue and, and once the student come back, I think online will still go on. I think people will adapt to it. But how are we going to deliver our content will change. And, and that's where I think all of us are going to come into the fact that our target group are different from Thailand, based in Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Phuket, or in the Northeast, or in Malaysia, or in Singapore. Uh, we cannot say that this work there. It doesn't work in our local community. So, so at the end of the day, we need to adapt. So, so the last key element that I really want the admin to look at is the adaptability that we can have and the flexibility. At the end of the day, we cannot use what we have or used to have or used to do and say it will be success if we just 
plug them in to the online community. It's not going to happen. So adapt and adapt and fle be flexible. Be open to new ideas. Be open to new learning methodologies. And at the end, break them down to your communication group, to the parents group, to the teachers group, to the community around you. And the design is needed. So, so I added four things here. One is we need to communicate with our parents, our students, our teachers, our curriculum design is shifted. And at the end, admin, administrators, directors need to have a new open mindset, be flexible, be willing to acquire new knowledge and willing to adapt to this change. It's not gonna be the same again. That's what I can say. And I think one, one thing to elaborate on too that you've talked about is just that, that adaptability and that flexibility of being an administrator and kind of giving up your idea of what administration used to look like. I spent a long time because we, we went into to quarantine and closed the school down in mid-March and we're obviously not returning for the rest of this year, which means that our, our testing that we did to check to see if our kids grew isn't happening. Um, our PLCs and the PDs that we spent so much time as teachers working on, there's no closure to that because for admin, what's very important during these times is what you talked about with the stress of, of what our teachers are going through. You need to figure out what is important and what is just busy work because a lot of what we do, even as teachers, sometimes turns into busy work. You need to get down to the bones of the situation and say, what is important? What do we need to move forward? What do I need to weed out? And maybe once things get back to a better normal, we can start that up again. We stopped doing our, our PLCs, our professional learning communities, just because I knew that was going to be another stress on top of what my teachers had to do. We stopped doing weekly, like weekly school meetings where, I mean, trying to get 70 teachers on a Zoom session at one time is not going to be effective. So instead, we reworked everything and we have weekly department meetings. Science meets at the same time every week. Math meets at the same time. I've limited my communication during emails to just what they need to know. There's no more like just checking in and like just being like, oh, guys, today there's free, like, there, it's not there. I do check in personally with all of my teachers almost on a daily basis, but the massive amounts of emails that I used to send aren't happening anymore because I know that would stress them out. And that's something too, when we're talking about curriculum, we're at this beautiful part of education, I think, that we've been kind of granted a gift that we can now reassess what is actually important that we're teaching our kids versus what was just busy work? What are the standards that we need to hit and how do we need to hit them? And what does that look like for grading? Um, grading has been something else that we've really tried to look at and we are going to continue. Our, we're, we're lucky our elementary is standard based, which means they're all going to be moving and progressing towards a standard. Um, they might not have, have obviously hit mastery like they would have if they were in school, um, but it'll get better as we go on and keep leading through. But for middle school and high school, we are, our school is going to continue doing the, the grades, but that looks a lot different. Teachers have to weed through about do I have to give all of these assignments or should there only be one for a unit that these kids really need to spend their time focusing on? Is giving them worksheets every time I see them really beneficial to what I'm trying to get them to show? Like the teachers are reassessing how they're teaching too, which is, that's amazing PD just right there because they're growing and they're understanding what they're supposed to be teaching. Also in terms of student work, Deadlines, does it really matter anymore? I mean, I know there's a lot of teachers that are very strict. You get it in on this day. If you get it in a day later, you're getting points taken off. That shouldn't be happening anymore. These kids are in a completely different situation. Um, the teachers are in a different situation. Having those same rules that we had when we were operating before, we can't do that anymore. And again, every school is different. Um, every school is going to be able to tackle these issues in a different manner based on what their community needs. Um, but yeah, due dates, that kind of stuff, we've been really flexible. We don't have due dates, even though grades are due, we're giving kids extensions to be able to get stuff in after the school year. We have to, otherwise all of our kids would be getting Fs, right? And we can't do that either because they're trying. It's just not 
And especially because we're learning as we go. So to try to think about, okay, well, if we're learning and we're changing, then we've got to give time to our parents and our kids to learn and change with us and not expect them to be able to pick it up right away and, and make those changes. So. I mean, I'll add to that. Let's, let's take a, a rubber band and it's the elastic city. Mm -hmm. We need to be elastic right now. And, and then we need to let go of some of the things that we are so rigid mm -hmm. before this. Right. And so at that point, like I said, the mindset of the admin is needed mm -hmm. to be flexible. And then once that comes in and your teacher is on board with you, your parents are on board with you, students are on board, then we can progress. And then unless we come to that point, we cannot. Now, now I'll bring the example into grade one and grade two, uh, six years old and seven years old, because that's where the problem is. Uh, could they do online? Could they not do online? What are the help that the school can help them? The teachers are doing their best to send work, to do live sessions, to do uh, video recorded sessions with the students. But at the end of the day, we need to understand a six years old nature. Staying home is in a new culture. They are used to being home and not study mm -hmm. and to come to school and then study. So at the end, if we are still wanting to teach them, assess them the way that a six years old is assessed at the school or taught at school, things are not gonna materialize. Mm -hmm. On top of that, a lot of parents need to work. And we never care that are they going to be at work by 8 o'clock or by 7.55 or 8.30. But at the end of the day, are they in the car at that time when the first class begins? We need to come to terms with those facts. And once we are and we understand them, we can help them more. I mean, an example would be, can we provide help afternoon? Can our TAs provide help extra one-on-one -on -one with them in the afternoon? Parents can sign up. Are the session recorded, even though if it's live and the parents can reschedule and watch them in the afternoon without helper? I mean, if an admin could look at the human aspect of people and how they are affected and have this word, compassion. Once we have that, we can progress. And, and things that we are facing challenges that People are complaining that this is not going to work, that is not going to work, because we want to give what we want to give. We're not compassionate at that point. So, so, so at this point, I think we all who is going to go into an online session have to understand. And, and that's where, where I'm looking at. Now, let's go back to the, the, the nursery to K3, or, or we call, some of you would call them early years or, or kindergartens. Uh, what can we do to help them? And, 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 and a lot of things goes this way, communications with parents, recorded sessions. We can adapt from schools to schools, what we do. Homework being sent home, there's a package that we can do, deliver them, record the TV uh, recording of the, the teachers can be sent through line instead of online. Things can change. It, doesn't, it does not need to come through Google Classroom in every session. So, so that's what I'm saying. If you can customize down, not just look at it as one piece of one model fit all, it helps the student and the parents and the teacher because at the end of the day, we need to help them. And it's our job. And, and, and kudos to all the teachers worldwide, you know. I mean, I understand the doctors and the nurses are going through a lot, but teachers are going through a lot too. Anxiety, stress, adapting, and all that. So kudos to all of our teachers out there and, and, and all the best. Learning can take place. We need to learn too as teachers and admin. So we need to continue. So, so any additional to those ideas? Um, again, it is just take, look at your community, look at what you need to do, um, figure out what works, communicate. We, we did a lot of surveys too. Um, we didn't always get the, the feedback that we wanted to get, but it, it helped us move in the right direction into a place where now this is, this is almost week seven for us. The first couple of weeks were a little rocky and then it, it fell into place and um, the parents stopped calling and there were, it started to feel like a, a new norm had already started to, to get better. What was our saving grace for our school in particular was schedules. Like we, mm -hmm. 
in the first couple of weeks, we went at it, and this is this by no means is the right or wrong way to do. This is just what worked for us. We had that time to plan, and we knew middle school and high school, sure, could follow the exact same schedules. Teachers would be online with them. They'd be work assigned. They'd see their class every single day as per their schedule for as long as they needed to. It might have not been the whole time. It might have just been the check-in. All, all depends on the situation. Um, but we tried with elementary and early years to only teach at 9 a.m. because we thought maybe the kids would get up a little bit later and they could check in with their teachers and the work for the day would be posted with video recordings of the teachers going through their things and that didn't that didn't work for us and our parents were like we have to go to work we need schedules so then that that pushed us for k1 through grade five then went to follow their daily schedule too so when they saw their thai teacher during the day, they saw their Thai teacher online. When they saw their music teacher, they saw their music teacher, which means you've got K1 through through grade five students in front of a computer from 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., which is a lot, right? But we found that that's A, what our parents really needed, but B, also that gave the kids something to look forward to because they didn't just wake up and see this is the assignments that you needed to do. They were able to connect with their friends. Then we took it a step further and started dividing classes into groups of like this group goes with this teacher at this time mm -hmm. and this group goes here. So we could differentiate and create individualized plans for, for the kids that needed it. Um, and then everything slowly started to, to fall into place. We did make the option of, of closing our nursery one and two, which is two and three year olds. We did close that program and switched our term to July. So they didn't finish off the year. They're going to come back in July to finish off their year just because they can't. Those little ones, we, we couldn't find a good way that worked for us to get them to sit down for that period of time. Um, Can I add more? I mean, yeah. once, once you create a structure and the research goes on that if we let the students stay in front of the monitor too long it's not good for their eyesight so so create a eye rest time every 30 minutes 45 minutes create an eye, eye rest moment in your structure scheduling once you do that and stick to that platform request that create an animation or a video on what the the eye rest session can be done students need to get up walk around, take a, a drink water, use restrooms, and, and those things, if you create a video clip on it, send it out to the students, and they know what to do during my eye rest time. Or create a, a, a session with their friends so they could rest and then and, and talk to their friends or enjoy or laugh. And, and, and these kind of things shift the uh, attention span up because they, the students in elementary need to take a break. And, and being in front of a monitor too long do not help anyone, not even till high school. So, 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 so my, 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 my point is when you plan the structure, keep in mind the eye rest of the student, keep in mind that they are human beings sitting and if they were inside the classroom right now, they can walk around, go talk to their friends, get their mind off. And, and the teacher inside the classroom did not teach 45 minutes throughout. They taught for like 20 minutes or 15 minutes and there's activity inside the classroom. Mm -hmm. So this kind of expectation is needed to be pushed out and realigned with our students. A class that are 45 minutes might not be 45 minutes online. It can be 20 minutes, it can be 15 minutes and then things can shift into places. Iris takes place, uh, movement of student is needed. We need to guide them because students, once they sit down, they're comfortable, they're gonna take a snack they're gonna sit there, they're gonna eat snack and learn, and things are changing. So, so according to all this, step back and redesign the process, evaluate it. What I did with my teachers was I told them to reflect, reflect on what we did every week and how we can make it better, looking at how to help the student in this situation. And if once those reflection happens, we communicate up better ways to come out with it. And it works differently from one school to another school. So we, there's no one policies that fit everyone. There's only how to use the technology that is one fit all, but how to be creative with it, 
differs from each place. So take 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 a step back and then don't be over rigid. Create a, a system where you care for them. The word care means all around it. Not just care about that they are delivered by the content, but but care that their eyesight is in the best, their eating pattern, their home, they are not with their friends. They need social life. We once we care about all this, then the curriculum design, the structure design changes. And we can change from time to time. It, it is not that one structure, once fit in, will last for the whole time period that we're doing this. Once we adapt to it, be flexible with it, adjust ourselves, and keep adjusting. And this way we improve, because these are new to all the schools too. And, and these are not just like additional resources. This has become a standard resources. So, so take a look again, reflect on yourself, on what we did. Uh, what I did further was we created a, a, a teacher team of five teachers or 10 teachers, and we reflect on this thing. And then we let them share with each other how I can improve. And what is attracting the student in? What is happening to the rest of the student? And, and then let them drop by and ask the, the student, how do they feel? Because the way being done to the parents is one thing, to the student is another, personal talk is another. So, so once we gather all these surveys and feedback, sometimes we feel bad about the result. <laughs> Don't. My advice would be, we take it positively so we can make it better. And, and, and trust me, the, the parents is going to not understand what we are doing. And therefore, frustration is there. The frustration is not because we're not doing right. It's because we don't have the same expectation. And, and we do not understand each other. That's why when I started, we said, break it down to different group and start communicating. And listen, the last thing that we need and, and the most important thing is listen. Listen to our parents, listen to our students, listen to our teachers, listen to our curriculum design. Listen, because being an administrator or a director, without listening and understanding and re-approach and guide them, because without listening, we won't know. And, 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 and the fact that leaders always think we know most, or, and this is, should be done, have to be taken out of our hands. Because without listening, we don't understand. Teachers can work from home. Teacher can work at school. What's convenient? We work that out with teachers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we cannot say everyone must come in, punch in at this time, go home at this time, because that means you're not listening to them. It, it does not mean they're not working. There's a way to check them if they're doing their things or not. You see, so, so, so open your eyes but also, most importantly, open your ears. Because without listening, we're not gonna be successful in this winter. And one more thing that I would suggest that schools do if you are moving into e-learning, um, do what you were talking about, making sure that the kids take breaks and not just focusing on academics. Do virtual spirit weeks. Do different challenges that the kids can send out. Um, we've done two spirit weeks now for our school and they've been like silly challenges of can you do this coin trick at home? If you can, have your parents film it and send it in, and then you get points for your house team. Um, so we've tried to keep a lot of the, the same systems that we had in terms of fun and, and getting the kids outside. We, we talk about every morning, we do do a morning announcement that gets filmed and, and shared with our, with our parents and our kids. Um, and there's always teachers coming in doing shout outs. We have something like an artist of the week. Our teachers still doing that. We teach them about like, okay, it's Friday, guys. What can you do this weekend? Go outside, play a game, run around, make sure you're taking breaks or Tuesday, Tuesday's an eating healthy day. Take a picture of your lunch and how you're keeping well during this time. Or, hey guys, today's Thursday. We're all stressed. Tell us how you deal with stress. And you get some pretty cool videos of what these kids are doing and then we can give it to our team and they compile these amazing videos of what these kids are doing and we share that out. So still, even though we're so far away, we can still use technology to build that community sense that we have with our school, which also helps with communication. 
um, and just being there. I think people are probably now annoyed with this seven weeks of hearing Miss Alyssa every morning talking into their computer, but it's consistent and it's a way that the school at least can show that we are in this with the kids, we are in this with the parents, we care, we're here, and we just, yeah, we take every day, one day at a time, and you just keep getting better and better as you go. All right. I mean, those are some of the, the tips we can give because we face a lot of challenges. It is a it takes time, but be open. And take it easy on yourself too, and tr and don't do anything on your own. Use your teams. You all have excellent people at your school, administrators, teachers. You're in this together. You're stronger together. Work through it together. Don't think that it's you're you're going to create something and it's going to be perfect. It's not. Um, <laughs> it's going to change. And you just, you pick yourself up and you guys keep moving forward as a team and you'll, you'll get through it. We'll, we'll all get through it. Yeah. Come on, Dan. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I, this is a kind of a half of a word value from your experience that you have one or, or two months that you have a problem from COVID. The, sure. the effect for the international school this is the real time and how you make situation that have more benefit for both teacher, parents, and audience, you know? Sure. Come, and and, and stakeholders that come for to participate with your two school. This is a good experience from our principal, our head, head, head teacher and teacher and parent in normal school how to do that, have the good way. For example, from Mr. Promis, the director of uh, Ram Kham Heng, uh, Aspen International School. That means that you have a three category of the people and teacher, both the students, you know, you know. And Correct. so then Arisa, hope so you understand the family with Thai country on, okay? But yes. so that this situation, this situation make us to improve to the below and more understand, say, me, my mother understand intercultural, you know, intercultural, not only about in Thai, okay? Important thing from that, from the Indian, not only Thai, but for Malaysia, from another country that come to join today, got a period from it. So that I would like to serve with Thai a little for talk with audience in Thai, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. COVID. Thank you very much. 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 Thank ทุกคนในประเทศนี้ผ่านกระบวนการจัดการเรียนรู้หมดเลยสถานการณ์จะช่วยให้เราปรับผมเองมีประสบการณ์การใช้ภาษาอังกฤษเป็นสื่อในการสอนโรงเรียนเกือบ20ปีคนที่ปรับยากที่สุดคือคุณครูครับที่ผมพูดเมื่อกี้คือ culture วัฒนธรรมองค์กรทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างแต่ถ้าเราช่วยด้วยสถานการณ์นี้เราจะไปอย่างดีโดยเฉพาะอย่างยิ่งทำไมเราสามารถถึงอะไรครับฟิกเรื่องของคนเคสของโควิดเนี่ยของไทยเนี่ยขึ้นเป็นอันดับหนึ่งของโลกได้นี่คือประเด็นที่เราน่าคิดหยิบซิทูเอชันนั้นมาแอพพลายในเรื่องการศึกษาเพื่ออนาคตท่านพอประมิตรโอ้โหเด็กอนุบาลมันจะเรียนยังไงเขาก็ต้องมีวิธีอื่นที่จะดีลิเวอร์เช่นเอาเอกสารไปส่งทุกสองวีคเพื่อให้ผู้ปกครองเป็นไงครับและเผอิญผมก็มีประสบการณ์จากการสอนทางไกลที่ไม่เคยเจอเด็กเลยผู้ปกครองเป็นผู้ช่วยเด็กที่ดีที่สุดแต่ถ้าเขาอ่านไกด์ที่คุณครูออกแบบสั้นๆง่ายๆให้เขาเขาไปจัดการไกด์ได้เลยนะครับเดี๋ยวตอนสุดท้ายท่านจะได้ชมเพราะนั้นโอเคครับ I switch back in English thank you Alisa and thank you for m o r m i t especially thank you for Isaac โอเค
uh, association of in Thailand okay to help us and collaborate together for improved quality of education not only in born in Thailand also world citizen especially future citizen of the world okay thank you ah oh, okay thank so you. Have yeah. thank you Kat. Thank you again for your presentation, Kap. I do uh, agree with your presentation, and uh, I, I got impressed about your attacking plan, the South well organized, and it gives me the idea how where the whole school can go forward together. And I do agree that human needs the offline activity, exactly true. Okay, now uh, I think it's, uh, it's the time for next session. เดี๋ยวเชิญเลยครับขอเรียนรู้ไปพร้อมกันในกระบวนการนั่นคือหมายความต้องอ่านอินสตรักชั่นอ่านอะไรนะสคริปต์ที่เราส่งให้ท่าน